Hello and welcome back to the Toffee Blues YouTube channel, your source for all things Everton. Today we're on the first match preview of the season, Crystal Palace away is our first game. Uh, I'm joined by Terry today and we're going to be taking a quick look at what we think might happen. We're going to make predictions, we might look at potential lineups. We'll briefly touch on the window but we'll save most of the transfers for another uh, video. And we'll briefly talk about pre-season as well, saying what kind of our expectations are for this game and what we think maybe Palace are going to offer and what their main strengths are going to be. So we'll just jump straight into it. We'll we'll start on pre-season. That's that's probably the best place to start. Coming out of pre-season, Terry, how kind how confident are you in the first few games? Because obviously the the season can progress. Obviously the the team can change. But straight out of pre-season, what are your thoughts going into it? I'm pretty pleased with um with the pre-season in the sense not for the entertainment value because the, there was none but um for the things that we saw were the things I wanted to see I wanted to see a defensive stability in pre-season I wanted to see you know players who didn't have pre-season last year get uh, you know a good pre-season we've had both of those things you know a few clean sheets in um in the games we've had we've seen Andre Gomez, Jerry Mina, they've had full pre-seasons. You know, they, they missed out on that last year. Bernard as well. Uh, the problem we had was scoring goals, but um, that is one area we've uh, we've addressed or looked to have addressed in this uh, this window towards the end of it after the pre-season game. So, brought in a new striker. Uh, at the time of recording, we haven't officially confirmed Alex Awobi, so I'm just assuming at this point that, that goes through without a hitch. So, two new attacking players. Um, yeah, so... I'm happy with the pre-season. Got out of it what I wanted. Um, if not, you know, watching the games wise, but uh, no major injuries and some good fitness built up for the players who needed it. Yeah, because I think probably coming out of pre-season, obviously most of the players didn't come back until later on, being on international duty. So now, obviously they're all back now. Obviously coming into the first game of the season, I think. Obviously there's there's absolute fume on Twitter. Obviously we scored three goals all pre-season. People weren't happy, but. Oh, that kind of always happens in pre-season. People are rusty. People haven't people been on holiday. I think maybe not immediately in the first game against Palace, but it takes time to hit the ground running. But I think first few games is where you start finding your feet. Obviously, not sure Keane is going to start yet. He probably I'd imagine Silva will start Calvert Lewin. But in terms of, I think goals is the main problem in pre-season. But that's not a major worry for me either. I think going and going out of pre-season. I think obviously there was. Some performances where we people claim we lacked creativity, but I think definitely in some games, I think we showed quite positive attack moves. I didn't actually catch much of the Mainz or Sevilla games, but there was times where you can see the understandings growing from last season. Because at the start of last season, obviously Silva wants to play as kind of attacking football, and I think only towards the end of the season against like the big six sides when we kind of went on that run, that was when the like the understanding kind of came in between the forwards and we kept scoring scoring for fun. So I think that understanding is now going to carry on into this season. And when people get more match up, I think that's when it'll, that's when we'll get better, really. It won't be immediate, I don't think, but I think after I think it was a decent pre-season. I don't think there's anything major to worry about. And obviously, we have added potential goals in Keane. Obviously, it's not a guarantee, but I I think after pre-season, we should be fine. Maybe not in the Palace game directly, but um, first few games, I'm sure we, uh, we should be fine anyway. And just... Adding to that, obviously, because I mentioned Keane might not start. I'm not going to ask you for your whole lineup. We can probably predict who's going to come in in there. Do you reckon any of the summer signings are going to start uh, in there against Palace? Um, only Gabamin, but I think that's um, through necessity. I think it would have been it would have been um, Fabian Delf, uh, given that he had most of the preseason or he had the most preseason of most of the new signings. Uh, I think in an ideal world, um, Silva wouldn't be. Starting any uh, many, if any of the um, new players in the first game or two, you know, obviously let them get some proper training under the belt with the team because unfortunately a lot of them have arrived late. But uh, but circumstances have dictated that we're likely to play Gabamin uh, from the start alongside Gomez. That may not even be the case. He may opt for Schneiderlin, but um, I think uh, Gabamin straight in, you know, may be a necessity. Um, Keen. Don't want to see him start. Uh, you know, got to protect a young player like that, a young striker. You don't want to, you know, he's gonna get, you know, come off the bench first game or two. You know, make an impact. You know, to show everyone as well. There's going to be a lot of hype around him because he's an exciting player, and the, you know, everyone, especially outside the club, seems to be really impressed that we brought him in. Um, but you know, this league's like this league is unforgiving to any imported players who aren't used to it especially teenage players, though he's not going to be used to getting kicked and pushed and, you know, not getting fouls for things that he's used to getting fouls for. So I want to see 
as much as possible. The new players introduced, you know, gently and let them, you know, establish themselves in the squad and in the team. Because where we went wrong last time, we had this amount of recruitment was you know, under Cumin. Now the, that was it wasn't the only problem because a lot of it was, you know. Um, unbalanced recruitment, you know, different positions um, were bought for at the wrong time and too many in one position. But we threw seven signings into the team at once. Seven new players over half the team when we did that recruitment under Cumin was all in on the first game, all seven players. This time we've got a better established team already here. So I'd like to see the team as close to what we played the, the end of last season, obviously. Swap uh, Zuma for Mina and swap uh, Ghana for whoever you know. Kabam and Delph, I'm sure, eventually will come straight. Will come back in, so Kabam can you know continue coming in slowly and um, maybe even Schneiderlin. Yeah, I pretty much agree on everything because I'm pretty sure it will be just won't even be able to play because I th- was there something like you've got to it's got to be registered by lunchtime today, I think, to play for Saturday. So yeah. obviously there'll be no will be Lucille won't start for Pickford. Obviously, we don't we don't really want to see Keane start. Well, we we want to see him play, but we don't want to see him starting against Palace. I think so. The lineup pretty much: Pickford, Coleman. Obviously, we haven't spoke about Sadibe, but he'll probably come in later as well. Uh, Keane and Mina centre backs. Dinye left back. Uh, two midfielders: Gomez and we think Gabamon. I'd imagine it's going to be Gabamon. To as much as Schneidlin, as much as Silva seems to still like Schneidlin, obviously he's he's quite. He's like Marmite to Everton fans. You either really hate Morgan Schneider or well, you don't think he's that bad. But uh, I think there was rumours about him leaving, but that's clearly not happening now anyway. And then, obviously, I think the front four will stay the same. So, Charleston, Bernard, Sigurdsson and Calvert-Lewin. So, obviously, nothing major there. In terms of Palace's lineup, uh, I spoke to uh, DR from Back of the Nest before. Zaha won't play. I think we're all pretty certain about that between coming back from the Africa Cup of Nations and then, obviously, everything that's happened today, I don't think he'll play. So, in terms of Palace, who do you kind of see as maybe their most dangerous uh, player? Who's their most threatening player, really, to you? I think he will play. I understand why, you know, you'd think he wouldn't because of what's gone on. But I think with the dust settled and, you know, the move never happened, he's their key player. I don't think if he's if he's not injured, I don't think they can afford to leave him out, especially since they didn't really recruit this summer. Uh, so, I think he'll play. Uh, maybe not start, but I even I will even go as far as say I think he starts. Um, assuming that he doesn't, God, I mean they've sold. Um, not that he would have been an attacking threat, but they've sold Wan Bissaka. They haven't replaced him. Uh, they let I think they let Soloth go as well. Um, some Palace fans might laugh because you know they're not the biggest fans, but Ben Teke. People, you know, Ben Teke has gone a bit off the boil at Palace, but he's he's not someone you can just discount. You could see Ben Teke and Mina having some uh, having some run-ins together. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah. He's he's a physical striker, and they tended to be the ones that we struggled with the most last season. Was the you know the Mitrovic type strikers, the big bully strikers. So if not Zahar, I'm going to say um, Ben Teke because um, he's got a nasty knack or we sorry we have a nasty knack of allowing players who are low on goals and need the goal for a confidence boost to allow we allow them to score against us quite regularly so either Zaha or Benteke for my danger man uh, for me obviously they made a couple of loan signs uh, Kamarasa for me obviously he impressed for Cardiff last year I wouldn't be surprised if Roy Hodgson just throws him straight in but I'm not sure if he's going to play wide or central I think he's quite a dangerous player obviously he was a standout in Cardiff obviously not exceptional team but I think he could be quite a danger man. Maybe James McCarthy probably won't start, but we all know how, how good he can be kind of on his day. But I doubt he'll start. Palace just seem to have signed. They just seem to have a lot of central midfielders, really. Obviously, as you said, they sold wan didn't replace him. And if Zaha doesn't start, that's a serious threat kind of taken out of their team. They don't look like a team that's going to cause any problems. Touch wood. Obviously, we all know what, what we can turn up and do. But I, I completely agree with you, same Venteke there. He seems like the kind of person, obviously, Mina, even he's been here for a year, he, he, he doesn't even seem particularly like he's set, he hasn't settled into the team at all yet. Obviously, that game against Fulham, when they hadn't won in like 20 games or something, we turned up, lost lost 2-0, Mitrovic bullied everyone. So I think, I'm probably uh, probably similar to you there, thinking, if, if Zaha doesn't play, I think we should win. 
personally. I don't I don't see how they're gonna threaten us. Obviously Townsend can off on his day can be quite a good player, but obviously leading on from that do you want do you want to make a prediction? I know some people don't like making predictions. Maybe not the score, but the result. Kind of. What do you think will happen? I'm going to go for an Everton win. I mean, it's a horrible, horrible um, thing predicting the first game of the season. I mean, except for Everton, we tend to do two two every year. Yeah, <laughs> every year. But I, it, it's now sitting here. I'm thinking we'll win. Uh, not so much because of ourselves, because they've had. You know, a pretty poor transfer window. Like they, you know, they, they've not had a good pre-season. They haven't replaced Wan Bissaka, and obviously they've had a big saga with uh, with Zaha. And I think that that's the key thing. They will be missing players in defence. You know, they, they're gonna really struggle without Wan Bissaka, who was an absolute machine last season. And let's be honest, both times we played Palace. Bernard could not get out of his pocket, and Bernard's a quality player. But what is their substitute right back going to do with Bernard now? Probably not going to be as good as Wan Bissaka. So I'm no. expecting to, have, you know, see a little bit more joy down the flanks now that Wan Bissaka's gone. But I'm, I'm feeling positive. It's it, maybe it's the it's the lack of games. I'm sure the club when they when they lose a few games, you don't expect to lose. They'll uh, they'll kick that optimism out of me. But um. Right now, I'm feeling good, so I'm going to go for a win. I'm not going to predict a score, because you never know, but I'm going to go for a win. And I'm going to go for a late debut goal from Moise Keane. It's a very bold prediction. It's Everton. I can only really see us getting a draw on the first day of the season. I think no matter what really happens, uh, whether it's whether we sign all the best players in the transfer window, I, I can only ever see Everton getting a draw on the first day of the season. People say Palace is a tough place to go. It, it, it is what it is, basically. I can see maybe you're starting well. I think it can see us starting positively, but then we know what we're like. We can very easily just fall apart towards the end of the game. I'll go for a 1-1 draw. I don't think it'll be a particularly exciting game either. I don't think anyone's at 100% sharpness, and especially if they don't have Zaha, I can't see them as a particularly exciting side. Uh, and then finally, just to kind of round up, in terms, obviously, the Wobi, uh, the Wobi deal's kind of broke not too... Uh, not too long before we've just uh, recorded this video. Now, at this very point, in terms of the transfer window, how positive are you for this season? Obviously, at one point, it was kind of like, we haven't signed another winger, we haven't signed another centre-back, everything's a bit grim. All of a sudden, the Wobies come along. So, following that news, what's your kind of thoughts for the season on a whole? Um, I mean, the thing with the Iwobi transfer is it's it's very much... And it's still very fresh, so I don't blame people for this. But it's very much viewed in the context of he's a alternative to Zaha. No one's really looking at him in isolation. I think people might feel a lot differently if, you know, on what day is now Thursday. So if if um, on Monday or Sunday just gone, it would have come out that we're actually in for a Wobi and we've been in for a Wobi all week, and it came off today. Now, there's still people who aren't a fan of him, and that, that's fine, but I think a lot more people would have a different sort of perspective on the transfer window um, than in the context that we have got it in, where it's like, oh, we missed out on Zaha, because Zaha, uh, a lot of people, myself included, felt like that would have been a game-changing sign. And I mean, I, I know it would have been questionable the amount of money we were going to pay, but on a strictly on-the-field basis, he would have been an amazing sign and um, adding to the team. So I'm going to let um, you know the Awobi thing settle a little bit before I start to really you know think whether it's a good sign or not because it's hard to think of it in isolation. The centre back, the lack of a centre back has really you know put a damper on the transfer window. The transfer window was an A grade transfer window and it's now gone to a C plus because it's one thing not signing a, a player you wanted, it's another thing to. Lead, to not sign a key player and leave yourself you know, dangerously short in a key position. So if we only had um, three wingers for the for the first half of the season, a little bit more forgivable considering you know Calvert Lewin and Moise Keane can also play you know at wide if called upon. You know, there's other players in the squad. Um, you can rejig the squad, but having literally two cent two senior centre backs, one of which has got a chequered injury record. Um, and an under-23 player and a player who's only really played consistently on loan as a full-back 
that leaves us with two fully, you know, fledged recognised centre backs, and one of them's got injured a lot last season. That is asking for trouble. I really hope they can stay fit for as long as we need them to. But it's took the grade down from an A to a C plus to me because everything else was great. You know, we replaced Garner. We don't know whether Gabaman's going to be as good, but you don't know about that with any player when you bring in. But we addressed the issue. We brought a player in who was signed to replace the outgoing player. We haven't replaced Zuma. He was crucial to us last season. We've waited for him all summer. Not blaming the club um, for the situation at Chelsea in the last days. I believe we were close to getting to Mori and then... Um, David Luiz uh, threw a spanner in the works, but it does feel a lot like when Giroud never signed and we had to go the first half of the season with only Calvert-Lewin as the striker and he wasn't ready at that time. And I think that may be the case with Holgate and Gibson, that they're going to play games, they, you know, more games than they're ready for uh, at this early stage. I just hope not, because at least when we didn't get Giroud, it wasn't like we had an, you know, another senior striker and we were just relying on him. Whereas in the centre back department, we do have two senior centre backs. It's not like we have no centre backs, but it's just so risky not having any any depth in that position. So, my, to answer the question you originally asked me a couple of minutes <laughs> a couple of minutes ago, I'm ex- I'm optimistic for the season. I'm I'm intrigued by how many new players we've brought in and how they're going to do. The signings we've made excite me. Moyes Keane especially. I you know couldn't I was so happy when we got him as a player and I you know was really excited about it. I think everyone is and um, I think this season's going to be a good one because we're not the only ones who didn't get transfer targets so we're not like we're at a disadvantage to everyone else Leicester didn't get a replacement for Maguire Man United didn't get a centre midfielder when they badly need one it's going to be as open as people expect it to be in the Premier League you just don't know who's going to uh, who's going to take advantage. I'm not really going to add that much to that. I pretty much agree. Uh, obviously, the centre back is probably the most concerning part of the squad. I think Mason Holgate. I feel this is if there was a time to step up, it would be now. And I think I'm glad it's not as much of a baptism of fire as kind of you've got to start every game and you've got to start now. Like obviously, we do have Mina and Keane like ready to start. They will be starting, and obviously Holgate will only come in if they get injured or if they need a rest. After that, though, you, you know if. If Mina gets injured, for example, we know he can, then who have you, you've got Keenan Holgate starting, who's the backup centre-back on the bench? It's Lewis Gibson in theory. I doubt it'll be Morgan Feeney. I haven't really seen much about him in pre-season at all. So I think, although the Rojo deal kind of fell through, I'm, I'm glad we didn't spend 25, 30 million on him because I think that probably would have been a, it probably would have been a panic buy. I don't, I don't really like to use the phrase. It doesn't seem like we're, we're too much into panic buys these days, but it, it, it would kind of come across as one, obviously... Uh, we did try and go in for Smallin, try and get a loan. Obviously, that was rejected. I would have been happy with Smallin, I think, than Rojo, but I wouldn't be happy with either of them on a permanent deal. So I think as long as we can survive until January, and it kind of is that surviving, as long as Mina and Keane stay fit and Holgate stay fit, I think if we can get to January, we're much better off recruiting then than kind of launching 25 million at Rojo and being stuck with him for, what, three or four years? So I think in terms of the window, I'm... I'm disappointed we didn't sign a centre back, but I'm glad we didn't panic buy a centre back. I think we could probably manage until January, and I think we could readdress this question in January. If it gets to the end of the January transfer window, we still haven't bought a centre back. Maybe alarm bells are ringing then, because I think it is it is a major problem. Obviously, releasing Jagielka and obviously Zuma not coming back. I feel obviously there was a lot of rumours today that Tomori was kind of he was coming, and then obviously David Luiz. I don't really know what's happened there. I don't really keep up that much with Chelsea news, but obviously he's ended up at Arsenal one way or another. So uh, I think I think it was you that tweeted something about he had a Brands had a plan A, then he had a plan B, and then he didn't know that all this Louis stuff was going to happen. So obviously I am glad that that didn't happen because it seemed from the rumours like Paul Joyce tweeting we we were just refusing to buy him permanently. It's not like we were being forced by Manchester United because we were that desperate for the centre back. The Killy have a lot of faith in Holgate as a backup and eventually Gibson as a backup but I'm quite happy with uh, the transfer window as a whole obviously today maybe wasn't the day some people were expecting uh, obviously Zaha and Zuma well, they were still there I, I kind of presume we weren't getting Zuma for quite a while now I think that was quite obvious with kind of what Lampard was saying what he was saying I don't think anyone really wanted to go I think everyone got a bit excited over the hashtag free Zuma thing even though obviously that was that was never happening that was never you know official but I'm quite happy with the transfer window. I think we're we're definitely we're sorted until January. We've addressed 
I think the major problem in our team was striker, and we've addressed that. That was, and then we fixed the holes. It's not like, like gone are the days of Everton selling a player and not replacing them until what a year later. So obviously we we sold Gay, we've replaced him immediately. Uh, obviously Delph is a good sign, and he can play centre midfield, he can play left back. We've replaced, uh, well we haven't replaced Kenny. He's gone out on loan, but we've got we've got backup there. I think it's been a quite a successful window. I'd give it a solid eight out of ten. I think it would have been a a perfect window if we had signed a centre back. But I think, obviously, back to the main video, it is the match preview of Palace. Obviously, it's probably going to be pretty much the team from last season, just to summarise. It will be that team. Maybe Gabamon starting, maybe Schneider, we're not too sure. None of the other signs are probably going to start. I've gone for a draw. Terry's gone optimistic, he's gone for a win. Uh, have you got anything else you'd like to add? No, no. Just um, I think it's just important to remember that as frustrating as it was to not get a centre-back, and as much as... I'm sure everyone would have liked one. Um, Marcel Brand seven he arrived. He's not the man to do things in one season. He's got to think of the long term picture. And frankly, if it, the choice was twenty five million for Marcus Rojo, or wait and you know white knuckle it and see if we can get through till January, I'm fine with 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 white knuckling it. It may cost us, but you know what I mean. Like when we didn't have a striker and it got to January last time, we bought Tosin and Walcott. They weren't necessarily stellar buys, but they weren't Marcel Brands buys. So I think we'll buy a centre back in January, um, and I'm glad he didn't pay that much for Rojo. I would have had him on loan. I would have had Smaller on loan as a little bit of insurance. But if you'd said you can buy him for, I mean, Man United bought him for 16 million. So it's took a small amount of gloss off what would have been a really, you know, a, a almost perfect transfer window. We've got two players for every position now, uh, apart from centre back, and um, that's the only the only sort of negative point. It's just about gritting your teeth and hoping that we keep the two centre backs we've got fit. If we, if neither of those two get an injury, we're okay until until um, January. Because even if Tamori had to come in, Tamori wasn't going to go straight in the team. It still would have been those two centre backs. So. We haven't lost anything from the first eleven by not getting a centre back. We've just lost that little bit of security, I think. Uh, yeah, okay, I pretty much agree with everything. So, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for all the uh, uh, the support on the channel recently. Uh, obviously, Terry's social media will be below his face somewhere. Uh, be sure to check out mine. All of our other social medias will be in the description. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and here's for a win against Palace. Goodbye. <laughs>